revival is not only uh, biblical, but uh, believe in revival because it is historical and God has done it in history. And because it is a communal, it changes communities. And it is practical, it changes people, it makes people new. And it is spiritual, it, it changes the whole spiritual tone, eliminating sin and, and crime. It, it's just logically the thing that is necessary. Let your rain fall in this desert. Societal transformation at a regional level is unusual, but it is no aberration. As history reveals, it will occur whenever and wherever God's Spirit is given room. Like the High Arctic, Scotland's remote Outer Hebrides echo with tales of the supernatural. And like the far north, this rocky, windswept armada seems an improbable place for God to visit. Yet the heavens have been rent over this ancient land with remarkable regularity. These visitations have been called revivals, but they are unlike anything most of us have ever experienced. History records gatherings of 9,000 people, but that's difficult to take in because there were only 12,000 people in the island. In 1949, the presence of God descended yet again, this time in the parish of Barbas. The refreshing was certainly needed, but it did not come easily. Religious pride and legalism had created deep divisions within the church. Some clergymen refused to believe that God could do a great work that did not begin with them. When the refreshing did come, they opposed it bitterly. There was such tremendous opposition from the largest denomination. Mary the Peckham was a teenager when the revival broke out, but she can still remember the spiritual coolness that preceded it. The spiritual temperature in the island before the revival was religious but uh, certainly not lively. It was a spiritual winter. Not everyone was ready to bundle up. Revival is a, something that, uh, when you've experienced it, you always want to see it again. One Revival-era convert, a godly store clerk by the name of Donald John Smith, recalls how local intercessors went to work. People were praying all the time for this revival. There would be praying in the barns, you would hear them pray. Among the more fervent of these prayer warriors were two elderly sisters, one of them nearly blind, praying for revival several times a week, often late into the night. They were gripped by the promise of Isaiah 44. I will pour water on a thirsty land and streams upon the dry ground. One of them was housebound. She was in bed there. I used to read the Bible with them and pray with them, and you would feel the presence of the Lord. They knew their Lord. Challenged by the faith of these godly women, seven church leaders gathered in a nearby barn to pray. For months, they pled with God that he might kindle a greater appetite for his presence. That was the defining moment of the beginnings of the revival. It was 1949 in the middle of the year. As the elders continued their travail in the barn, they began to notice the lights in nearby crofts and farmhouses burning late into the night. Some never went out at all. The people's hunger for God had overtaken their desire for sleep. The elders realized their prayers had been answered. It was a community at prayer. Their faces would be tear-stained. There was such an expectancy, such a desire. And these prayers were travailing. They were painful prayers such a longing that God would come. And uh, God answered. With nothing more to delay him, Jehovah drew near. Something very significant had happened the previous night. There was something quite strange, almost eerie, in the atmosphere of the house. We felt this power, and uh, afterwards, even the dishes were clattering. It was as if uh, the Lord came down with a mighty wind. The house shook with the power of prayer and the presence of the Lord. And people were afraid because this was a supernatural happening. The Shekinah glory of God descended upon the community, a tangible supernatural light hovering 
around many of the farmhouses. There was lights coming on houses. The glory of the Lord was just shining around about them. They were all still. They couldn't say a word. What could they say? Be still and know that I am God. That's all we said. Around 4 o'clock in the morning, a crowd of several hundred people gathered outside the community police station. Many had traveled from neighboring villages, drawn by an incomprehensible power. Walking on the main road, there would be kind of to God to have mercy on them. They were lying down on the road for God to have mercy on them. It was as if we were suddenly in eternity. Eternal issues, eternal things were were very, very real to us. A key figure in the unfolding revival was the Reverend Duncan Campbell, a fiery preacher with the United Free Church. He would storm up and down the pulpit. The perspiration would run down his face. Oh, my dear people, listen. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. The meeting halls were packed. Just as many unbelievers came, many uh, all over the island were coming. The church was crowded to capacity. People sat in the windows. Just as many outside. Oh, yes. Just as many outside. You can make a community crusade conscious, the fiery revivalist would say, but only God can make a community God conscious. You see, the presence of God puts the flight program. Not an evangelist, not a special effort, not anything at all on the basis of human endeavor, but an awareness of God that gripped the whole community. Soon the moving of God's spirit was felt on other islands, including Harris, Bernera, and Tyree. But it was the revival on North Uist that Jean Blanchard remembers best. The year was 1957. There was an awareness of God's power working throughout the island. People were being saved every night. Lives were being transformed. We could only say, God came by. As news of the revival spread, several reporters showed up on the island around Christmas time. Upon arriving at their hotel, they were promptly escorted into the bar by the local proprietor. Look, he said, all this alcohol is here. He said, the people are not coming. They're going to the meetings. The revival meetings had just spoiled their sales. Similar complaints were heard all over the islands. Lifestyle was changed already. There's no doubt about that. The drinking houses of the village, they gradually disappeared one by one with the power of the revival. It affected the whole community. You couldn't be indifferent to what was happening. It was as if there was a canopy of an awareness of God over the whole island. And there was a complete transformation. And the people in the world knew it. God had come. That was the answer. Having observed God's willingness to transform discrete territories and cultures, only one question remains. Can this happen at a national level? Is there any...